In March 2016, the computer program AlphaGo defeated Lee Sado, an 18-time world champion, in a Go match. Most experts did not expect AlphaGo to win. Neither did most other people. A national survey showed that 56% of Koreans expected Lee to triumph, while only 11% thought AlphaGo would. However, it won. Big deal. Why should we care about it anyway? Well, the price was very high. One million dollars! Just kidding. You should care because this game raises a very, 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 very important question. Can machines outsmart humans? Well, they sure did in the Go match. How did AlphaGo win? What does this mean for us? AlphaGo could win because it utilizes a new kind of computer algorithm. The emerging type of programming AlphaGo symbolizes is the future of technology. Basically, there are two types of algorithms. That is, two methods of getting things done. Centralized design and decentralized design. Centralized design is like a blueprint. You decide ahead of time how exactly to construct the building. You decide exactly where to place every single nail, exactly how and in what order. This is what programmers did when computers were first invented, and they continue to use this method for many programs. Let's be a bit more specific. Suppose you want to train a computer, no, how about a student? Suppose you want to train a student how to do math problems. A centralized design would tell him exactly what to do. First read the problem, then decide if it's an addition problem. If so, dip your pen in the ink and write some lines of numbers and add them. Oh, and don't forget to breathe and blink or you'll die. It can get really complicated. Then there's decentralized design. Here there's no blueprint. Instead, you decide what to do as you experiment and predict. You have no idea what you're going to do after you lay that first brick. You can try out all the different locations of the second brick before deciding where to place it. You can remove the first brick if you want. Or you can build a million buildings, then decide which one's best, tear the rest down, and improve upon the one remaining. So to train a student with a decentralized algorithm, you allow him to experiment on his own. Sure, the student might try to uh, eat the paper or not blink, but surely after many tries he'll find it's best to first read the problem, or he might even develop his own efficient way of approaching the problem that we never dreamed of, and he'll still keep improving. This is the advantage of decentralized algorithms. When machines first started using decentralized algorithms, they seemed inefficient and dumb. They were like babies, yet like babies they could learn from experience. Predetermined blueprints cannot change, but an evolving floor plan can get better and better. In particular, AlphaGo achieved its success through machine learning and a tree search. Machine learning is the result of a decentralized algorithm. There are three types, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning. To train a student to do math, you give them a lot of questions and their best possible answers, but no answer explanations. The student needs to work out how the answers were gotten and be able to do other problems in the future. Unsupervised learning. You give the student a lot of problems but no solutions. Though this may sound very difficult to do, it is sometimes necessary. It is necessary when we don't even have any example problems. Thankfully, this doesn't usually happen in your math class. Reinforcement learning. You still don't give the student answers, but you tell him his grades after each exam. You take him to ice cream when he gets them right, and spank him when he gets them wrong. Reinforced learning is the type AlphaGo uses, since AlphaGo does not know what the best strategy of Go is, but does know whether it won or not. Though I don't think it likes ice cream. But how can AlphaGo know what to do if we don't give it any instructions at all? Well, one way to implement machine learning is to try every single possibility. On a Go board, this is relatively straightforward. AlphaGo uses a tree search to check every move it can make, and see which is better. The two simplest types of tree search are depth first and breadth first. So if AlphaGo used a depth first or breadth first tree search on the 2x2 board, it would look something like this. But Go is not played on a 2x2 board. On a 19x19 board, the first move has 361 possibilities. For each of these first moves, there are 359 possible second moves, and for each second, 357 third moves, and so on. 
so in all there are about 4.67 times 10 to the 384th power possible strategies, which is so large my Java program thinks it's infinity. Lucky this calculator can handle large numbers. What's more, AlphaGo isn't just going to search once, it needs to practice again and again since the opponent makes different moves each time. Even with its advanced hardware, AlphaGo can't try every single possibility, so it uses another tree search, called a Monte Carlo tree search. In this search, you only try the moves that are the most promising. Each time AlphaGo finishes a game, it updates its record of how many games each move won. After numerous trials, AlphaGo will have a rough idea of which moves are more likely to make it win. AlphaGo first trained itself by imitating human masters from historical games, then switched to playing with itself when it got better. When playing with the European Go champion Fan Hui in October 2015, it had already gotten very good. However, many people, including Lee Sido, didn't see this as a big deal. They had seen the match, and AlphaGo hadn't exactly been world champion level yet. But by the time of Lee's match, AlphaGo had surpassed it. After years of improvement, AlphaGo has developed its own unorthodox and powerful style of Go, and no master has beaten it in the 60 matches it played on the internet after the famous March 2016 game. And this brings a deeper question. Will machines surpass humans? I mean, they are not only beating us, they are learning from us while beating us. They are not only smarter, they are also more diligent. Humans are lazy, excuse me, and need to eat and sleep. But when have you heard of a program needing to eat and sleep? Instead, they are simulating millions of games as we snooze in our beds. In the future, the worst fate for a human is not being exploited by machines or other humans. Instead, you are useless. You do not have any value to be exploited. AI could do it cheaper and better. So, will AI wipe out the dumb human beings? Apparently, machines are still dependent on humans now, but in the future, I don't know. Some, though, have come up with the Beat AlphaGo trilogy. Take out its battery, plug, and network. Or join the Human-Machine Alliance. Perhaps the future will evolve towards the prediction of Kevin Kelly in his book, Out of Control. Machines will converge towards evolving biology. Biology will converge towards mass-produced machines. Humans, machines, coexisting and co-evolving, merging into a tangled organic ecosystem. God bless us all.